Sometimes you leave me aching, aching and confused. And we are all hoping for love, for love. Sometimes. Human again? Human again. Yeah, long. Needed, needed show. <laughs> so nice to meet you. You too. Fish, man. Good time, right? Oh, Have a good sorry, drive. Man. You're welcome again. <sighs> what a legend that man is. God, I, oh God. Uh, right, fresh, energized, <sighs> coffeeed up. <laughs> All the cars have been wiped. We are literally ready, ready to We're go. Ready <coughs> to hit up Belgium. We are ready to go. Everything, like Tris said, everything's done. Everything's done. We've had a nice shower, needed. which was really needed, wasn't it? Needed that. Really needed that. Uh, we've got our shop in. We've uh, yeah cleared the cards, yeah. charged a few batteries. Not all of them, but we are we are struggling for power. We've got one car battery left out of three. We've yeah. stripped how much? 670 gigabytes yeah. of filming and pictures like it's been crazy but but on a brighter note yeah belgium geo we're coming for Monkey you boy. Syndicate. <laughs> yes. get a belgian car yeah studying the weather all week and uh, it does look like we do have another load of rain coming this evening especially in uh, the, uh, the Ostend area where we're going so yeah can't wait to get wet again I've got a confession I just missed the turning oh no but I was too worried about the camera and I missed the turning oh Tristian hello mate hello mate how are you <laughs> not bad How's it going? Um, just had the rods out, so uh, nothing hap happened with, uh, really, but um, I'm confident for a take tonight. Yeah. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Catch, some Catch fish. a big one. Be lucky. Nice night. And you too. You too. Okay. Got the key. Got the key. Right. Got an hour. Obviously we're not going to get there in daylight unfortunately, but doesn't mean not a chance for fish. One hour on a sat nav and uh, yeah, hopefully. Catch some Belgian carp.
good morning. Um, it was really, really late by the time we got here last night and after, you know, a, quite a long drive and next to no sleep the night before, um, we sort of got a couple of rods ready and flicked a few singles out in some light looking areas. And uh, to be honest with you, I got our heads down pretty sharpish. It is mega, mega windy today. And our sort of initial idea for, 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 us, for our session here was to sort of bait a couple of areas in the margin, wander around with a stalking rod and sort of hope to find a couple of carp feeding. But realistically, I don't really think that's gonna be a possibility. As I said, it is so, so windy. You can't really see anything underneath the surface. So that's sort of that idea out the window. So Lou and I, we sort of conjured a bit of a plan. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna split up, uh, one at each end of the lake. It's only a relatively small lake anyway, but uh, I'm gonna go right in the teeth of the wind and Lou's gonna go off the back of it. And um, yeah, hopefully we can sort of try and find some carp in those areas, which uh, I think is, is, gonna be, is a high possibility. Because we were so knackered last night, um, we did decide to have a little bit of a lay in this morning. So by the time we got up, had a coffee, had a bit of breakfast, and sort of had a chat about what we wanted to do today, it's around about midday now. So um, we're going to get all our gear packed away, get in our swims, set ourselves up for the night, and I've completely forgot what I was going to say. And um, hopefully we can winkle out our first car from Belgium. So hello, good afternoon from me. I've, uh, I've been sitting here all day with, uh, with just three rods on the floor, fishing singles. As we said this morning, we did split up in the end. Trist has gone down, oh, gone down the far end of the lake in the teeth of the wind and, uh, and I've opted for this end of the lake. We're trying to sort of cover both options, one of us in the teeth of the wind, one of us on the back of it. Um, the day has been very quiet. I've, uh, I've, I've sat here in this swim with, uh, with three rods out on singles, just, uh, just to see if I could nick a bite before committing to an area of bait. But it's approaching that time now, it's getting towards uh, four o'clock in the afternoon. We have only got until sort of eight o'clock tomorrow morning until we have to head off to France. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna start prepping the rods for the night. I've decided to, uh, I'm gonna put one rod over onto the far margin. I'm actually gonna cast it onto the bank, walk around in my waders, get into the water, place it by hand where I can see the bait is how it's sitting um, and then sort of scatter a light, light amount of bait around that one sort of towards a sort of marginal bush and then with the other two rods I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of commit to an area and uh, spread a good kilo and a half over that area and fish two pop-ups over the top. That's what I'm confident in and that's what I think will work on this trip. I may eat my words, the conditions certainly look and feel perfect to us whether the fish are playing ball after that very hot spell last week I don't know but you've got to be in it to win it um, we really want to catch a cart from Belgium for this trip uh, before we head off to France but you know what will be will be we're going to do our best we're going to fish our best and uh, yeah fingers crossed for uh, our first Belgium carp before the morning Quiet rods for me, but it doesn't matter. We're in it as a team. Trist's uh, dropped the last piece of the puzzle in for this leg. Yeah, literally, like middle rod, absolutely like, pissed off. <laughs> Hit into it, and it kind of got like, quite straight out of the tree straight away. And the whole time it was just like plodding, like slow, like plodding, like oh, just out in front of me. Clear, it's clear of all my other lines and that, and it was literally just. So I kept my head torch off like the whole time. Yeah. 
and uh, I didn't flick it on, it was just under the neck cord. There was no snags around me or anything, I just didn't need to know where it was. I just knew it was in front of me, probably like that. I literally just flipped it on and it was just like his lips just looking at me. <laughs> Got my net from behind, well, my net was already there, and literally one scoop, and it went <laughs> straight into the back of the net, like, and it just um, erupted, and yeah, look down. Happy days, first Belgian Cup. Yeah. Off the map. <laughs> it was like 32 2. 31 32 2. <laughs> cool. There we are. When I was laying in bed last night just before I went to sleep, after not seeing anything on my spot, so I wasn't too sure if it was actually going to happen, I was rewarded with this. Perfect, perfect way to see off Belgium. Haven't been here for long, but uh, yeah, happy to say we managed to bag one. Let the drive to France begin. Happy days. <laughs> perfect way to win Belgium. And still got a whole week left of our trip. <laughs> I can't believe it. But yeah, I just words can't even describe this trip so far. So I'm gonna let you watch the film and see for yourself because yeah. <laughs> it's been mental. To France. Obviously, we've been moving around a lot over the last week. Um, I wouldn't change it for the world, it's been incredible. It's been amazing. But it's going to be nice to just get our heads into our own swims for a yep. start, yep. Our, own, our own areas of the lake. It's, uh, I think are, you get, are you getting fed up with me then, Bob? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we've got about 12 acres of water and there's five of us fishing. Yeah. So that's pretty self explanatory. We've got uh, our own water to play with. I think 10 swims, wasn't it? Sorry to interrupt. I think yeah. it's 10 swims. I think it's 10 swims. Yeah, there's five of us fishing. Maybe so, a bit of uh, manoeuvring around in the week. Exactly, maybe a few Stalking. little moves. I believe we have boats at our disposal if we need them as well. So, uh, yeah, spice it up a little bit. Yeah, all in all, getting very excited. Yeah, can't so, wait. Uh, yeah. Just 10 minutes now. 10 minutes now. Uh, you can see on the map so much water's around this area, look. Oh, yeah. We're getting into Carp Zone. Carp City. Carp City. And a tank just... Hello. Hello, mate. Yeah, it's been <laughs> sick. It's been so good. Yeah, it's man. Yeah, it's sick. What's up? There's Big Al. Hello. What's happening? How you going, bro? Good Jem's going to pick it out. Basically, it's got your initial. So basically, Al and Jem are going on spit, and it's down to me. Right, here we go. It's a night doing me. Trist. Who is it? It's going to be an L. K. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> L. See you, Lewis. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> okay, you should come back last.
As the morning broke and as the mist began to rise, we all gathered for a coffee to discuss the previous night. It was fair to say that the feeling was pretty mutual across the group. We had our suspicions that the fish were getting ready to spawn after hearing a lot of activity throughout the night, and with just a few catfish to show for our efforts, we headed to a local McDonald's for some breakfast and to assess the situation. Over breakfast, which soon turned into lunch, and well into the afternoon, we began considering our other options. We did have a backup public water in mind, and after a call came through from the bailiff confirming our suspicions, we wasted no time at all, headed to a local supermarket for supplies and back to the lake to collect our kit. Fished a pay leg once. Didn't pay. So we've arrived at a location in France. It's a group of public lakes and there seems to be gates shut everywhere. We're not sure what we're doing. Well to summarise, because there's a lot happened, but that's how many lakes there are here. And we're looking for one of them, but we don't want it is. <laughs> no idea which one it is, no idea if can't fish some of them. We know there's a certain lake that we're looking for, but we don't know which one it is, and it's pitch black at night. Or maybe I'll put the night vision on, that might help. <laughs> yeah. Um, we basically need a place to crash for the night and we can sort it all out in the morning, but we don't really know where, where we're going. We we're just going down a dirt track and with lakes either side we're of us. We're literally going arson to nowhere. Yeah. After eventually arriving at the lake we drove all this way for, late at night, we found the gate to be locked and closed for a pike tournament. Now we had no idea what to do as it was getting late. We found a different lake that was open, pulled out our bed chairs and got some much needed shut eye. When morning came and after checking the signs we were pretty sure we had a lake that we could fish. We knew nothing about it nor what it contained but what we did know is that it wasn't private or a day ticket, it was in fact a public lake. After a quick walk round, we found some showing fish and they were carp. A few big ones at that too. I just got it on the film. I just got it on there. That was it. We had a place to start and off we went to get our licenses before coming back to get the rods out. I don't know what you just asked um, Tom, but his reply was not sure if that will work. You'll end up in handcuffs, I reckon. Pointless us all driving around in a circle. We will go and find something and then ring you. Yeah. If we get the last come save us. Just go to Cathlon. At least it's safe an option, surely. 25 minutes away. Yeah, 25 yeah. minutes? 20 minutes, yeah. 23. It's 100% though, guarantee they're going to do it. Yeah. Apparently so. Gary, <laughs> 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 me! I can't walk. Go! Yeah, you're too flat. <laughs> Just about there. <laughs> <laughs> do or not? <laughs> right, 
Right, we've got our tickets now. We've got tickets, we tickets. We've got European more than one anglers. We've got crowns in here. <laughs> we got back to the lake after a couple of hours of our licenses, as this did prove more difficult than we first thought. There were a few more anglers dotted around when we arrived, but we soon located some fish and headed around to some different areas of the lake to try and nick a quick bite. This boost in our morale was short-lived. Not long after our rods were positioned, we were politely informed by a French angler that this was a day-only venue. So we found ourselves back to square one again with nowhere to fish for the night. So mate, what's the plan? plan, if it's a plan, is we're currently on our way to another lake which is a little bit different to the sort of lake we've been fishing. It's a bit bigger, um, it's some sort of reservoir I believe in between locks. Um, yeah, and to be honest with you, apart from the fact that it's rather large, it's about all we know. We know it's potentially quite good for a bite, we hope, we hope, it's, we hope it's potentially good for a bite. Um, Again, it's all, this is all off recommendations. This is all off recommendations. We're and blind, absolutely we're blind. completely blind and it's just, I don't know, trying, everyone's trying to keep their morale up and eventually it's going to come through, but it is getting tough. Tough. tough it's getting work. tough and it's not nice not having a plan. And it's not nice having somewhere to actually put some time into it. No, no, and I must admit, five people isn't exactly ideal to be travelling around trying to find somewhere to drop on. No, it's not at all. Um, but we're trying to make it work, aren't we? Yeah, it's just a shame that this beauty on my right hand side shut because this is the lake we came all this way for. Yeah. And um, it's it's closed for a pike tournament, and in fact, the pike tournament isn't even on at the moment, no one's even fishing it. So it's a completely empty lake with massive potential. It would be perfect. Big fish as well. With big fish and lots of them. But we can't fish it. Driving through the French countryside after making a call to a friend for help, we were on the way to our last option. It was very hard for us all to keep our spirits high after the setbacks, but we had to keep the faith. By the time we arrived, it was almost dark. The cameras barely came out the bag as we concentrated with our best efforts to get the rods in place. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big open lake next to a canal and was very busy. The best we could do was slot in between some other anglers for the night and have a better look in the morning. the middle of another um, turn of events. We uh, decided to leave the lake this morning, seeing as probably 50 pike anglers turned up and one of them was walking on my spot. <laughs> so um, yeah, didn't really make, take that long to make a decision we were leaving. We've got another one, got another lake. We bumped into a lovely couple of Dutch lads who um, have put us onto a series of potentially public lakes. I know a lot of them are, I don't know about all of them, um, at the other side of this little town. So uh, yeah, we're about two minutes away now and just um, yeah, hoping that this is somewhere that we could potentially spend the next couple of days. So. Yeah, 
right, okay, so it uh, looks like we're sort of slowly starting to formulate a bit of a plan for the next few days. Um, we have an address, we have a potential lake, we're four minutes away. Um, it's another public water, um, as, it ha as they will have been over the last sort of couple of days, but this one looks promising. We know for the fact we can actually do nights on there, which is good, helpful. <laughs> yeah. um, and we know that there are quite a few fish in there. We, 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 as I've mentioned before, we, we bumped into a couple of Dutch guys on the last lake we were at. They've actually come from this lake. And um, yeah, they didn't really walk around too much, but the first swim they went in, they were there for about eight hours. I think he had a 20 kilo plus. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, what we're after. Exactly what we're after, or at least a chance of a fish. So it is a Wednesday, and in France, Wednesday is a holiday day, like we have a Sunday. So um, fully expecting to be a little bit busy, which would explain all the pike anglers on the last place we were at. But um, yeah. Well, well, we'll see. Um, I'd like to think that um, even if people are fishing for the day, they'll be putting off late afternoon because they've got work tomorrow. Purely assumption, but um, yeah, that's what this whole trip's been at the moment. Yeah, assumptions assumption, and presumption, and guesses, and yeah. So yeah, I think yeah. Well, as I say, we're three minutes away now. Uh, a hell of a lot of water. In this, two point two region. kilometers away, and you can only just look at the map and you can see quite how much. Um, water is here. That's a great big pond over there. <laughs> so uh, I'm getting a little bit excited now. It's been a little bit deflating, I'll be honest, over yeah, the last couple of days. It's been I've a bit struggled. stressful. I've really struggled today. Yeah, I've been trying to keep losing my up. I think a McDonald's and a toilet and a sink helped. <laughs> but, um, tell yeah. you what, it doesn't make a difference. Just brushing Washing your, your teeth. face and brushing your teeth Washing, in, yeah. in your local Mackey D's. In so, local um, other fast food chains are available. <laughs> <laughs> like KFC. Yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, well, that's yeah. about as much as I can say at the minute, apart from I can see a ton of water. Yeah. So it's time to get excited again. It's time to get a little bit excited. Hydrowoods are out of the bag. Yeah. Ready to go yeah the sun's fish. out as well. The sun hasn't been out properly for the last couple of days. Uh, in fact, the mist has only just cleared and it's actually 11 minutes past 11. There we go. That's our lucky number. That. So, um, yeah. Very busy. Lots of people. Yeah, there is. We should probably split up. Yeah. All right, cool, that sounds good. We're just to your right now. Yeah, do it, man. Get, get set up. Yeah. All right, mate. Sweet. I'll see you in a minute. Bye, bye. He said it. It's in two. It's in one just to his left in the margin. Show. Sorry. Proper show. It's yeah. decent. And the other one was decent. Mm -hmm. So I've had a little lead about in the in this little corner where I'm fishing in this little bay and it is weedy. Um, so, but, so, so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a wander around there, with, wander down there with a rod. I have seen a couple of like holes in the weed. I might just be able to get away with wading out there and placing a rig in, in between the weed. So I think that is pretty much what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fish two rods down to my left. Put a load of cross boily, tigers and whole boily into a little bucket, slush it all up, drop it in amongst the weed. One sort of reasonable size handful over the top of it. Uh, see how that looks before I walk off because the water is dead clear. And uh, yeah, go from there. But I think that's going to be my best bet. Yes. Get in. Yeah. 
So after driving around for a few days, having some sleepless nights, we've managed to decide on staying in this lovely little park lake we found. And within an hour and a half, I managed to grab this little one. Not so little, but nice mirror. So all that driving was worth it. It's a nice one. Bring on the next lot. <laughs> First public lake car. Yeah. So hello, finally I've got a smile back on my face and so have all of us now to be fair. We travelled about an hour and a half and we arrived here this afternoon with blazing hot sun and a very, very busy complex. There was untold amounts of uh, predator anglers here, spinning, lure fishing, fishing for pike, perch, uh, fish like that and uh, yeah to be honest it's, it's, it was a bit of a nightmare when we got here we sort of thought Blimey, this is so busy. There's people everywhere, there's cars everywhere. Um, proper public lake and, uh, and yeah. But eventually we, we, we hopped in the van, myself, Kieran and Trist hopped in the van. There's a lot of lakes here. I would say there's probably 25 to 30 different lakes, maybe even more. Uh, we had a good scout around the whole lot. We drove up to all the gates. Uh, more, than, more than half of them are, are private lakes. So normal pay lakes that you would book out for a week with a group of friends as normal on a, on a sort of normal French trip. Um, there's also a lot of day ticket lakes as well. So a lot of these lakes where you can just turn up, pay the money and fish the day or, or the weekend or whatever. So we found, uh, we found this, this lake and one just to the back of it that are purely public lakes. The, uh, the GDP, the Garde Pêche have actually been down today and checked our um, French public lake licenses and have completely assured us that this is an actual public lake. We were allowed to do nights in all the swims and apart from one other person on the lake we've got the whole lake to ourselves. It's not very big, it's approximately I would say between four and six acres in size. Um, it's quite a round shaped lake but there is a, there is a bay around the back of me as well. Um, good few overhanging trees, uh, a nice shallow plateau and some deeper areas as well and I'm pleased to say that uh, Alex's other half, Gemma, has caught a fish already today. So yeah, a lovely way to start on a new lake. A nice 24 pound mirror. The water is quite clear as well. It's not gin clear, tap clear, but it is clear. Uh, and the fish had some really nice character to it. Nice dark colors, uh, exactly what we've come here for. So yeah, we've really got our fingers crossed um, that there's gonna be more in the pipeline. We have been informed that there's a fish over 30 kilos in here as well, so that equates to somewhere over 60 pounds without working it out, probably close to 70 pounds. Um, so yeah, we're, we're all excited. We've all got our own swims. Um, Kieran's right, right next door to me, behind the camera at the moment. And, uh, and yeah, he's fishing the deeper water. I'm on the plateau and one sort of towards this willow behind me. So yeah, we're gonna have a bit of dinner, finish setting up the brollies for the night. Get, everything's dry now as well, which is a massive edge. And uh, yeah, have a bit of food. We've got our fingers, our toes, everything crossed for a bite tonight. So um, yeah, let's hope it happens. Lewis, massive, mate. It's fucking huge. It's fucking huge, Lou. It's fucking huge, mate. Get it in the net, get it in the net. Oh my God, it's fucking massive. <laughs> yes, it's fucking massive. <laughs> oh. It's fucking huge. Oh my god. <laughs> Ow! Ow! Ring Tristo. Is he good? Mate, look at it. Is he good? Oh, yeah. Never. Jesus, a hippo. It's what it was all day long, innit? How wide is it? Brother. Good on you! What you done, Kim? Well, took a bit of time prepping this morning, or well, this afternoon when we got here. Um, probably led it about too much, to be honest with you. But it's quite weedy out there. And I wanted to find a nice spot, and I did. It was only close in, five wraps. 
it's gone. And it's absolutely huge. You've got a bit of an audience as well. And I've got an audience. We've got loads of people here. It's a public lake. This is what it's about. Everyone wants to see it. And it's massive. It's big. It's a big carve. <laughs> and I'm buzzing. I don't know what to say. <laughs> well done, mate. Woo! Your chairman's coming up. Are you going to pitch a show away or are you going to get uh, a I don't know, I'm a bit buzzing at the minute. Hello. Hello. I've got a lump in there. An absolute unit, mate. Seriously, there's loads of all of everyone's watching. It's, it's big, it's big. It's not white, it's from here. Right, so after the most horrible of trips so far, um, been to a stupid amount of lakes, nothing's gone right, not a thing has gone right to be honest with you. We finally got put on a good lake and we've only been here six hours. Um, Gemma's had one, smaller one, 24 pounds. And me and Lou are just getting sorted, doing a few bits to camera. And my left hand rod um, on the margin, just on the edge of some bushes, um, picked up tight. And instantly I saw it was massive, but I didn't think it was this big. 54 and a half pounds of public park French car. <laughs> what a creature this is. Its mouth is literally perfect. Looks like it's never been caught. It probably has, but huge gob on it. What a fish. Oh, I can't believe it, absolutely speechless. Absolutely speechless. It's made everyone's trip but already and we've got four nights left. I can't wait. What a carp. Don't know what to say. Unbelievable. Rolling. Well, it's the aftermath of the absolute carnage that's happened probably about half an hour, 45 minutes ago now. Um, that massive, just under 55 pound mirror, which I'm still absolutely on cloud nine with. It hasn't sunk in yet. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about it other than mental carp. Public lake fishing doesn't get more public than this. We've had barbecues going on right behind where we're fishing. Um, even had people praying today, so. It's been a bit of everything, but I've enjoyed it already. Um, we really, really struggled, to be honest, this week. 
it's been so hard. We've only been in France sort of three, three nights, but we haven't really fished properly yet. We are, I don't feel like I've fished properly once. So when we got to this lake, the, uh, the excitement really did um, build in all of us, to be honest. And we've spread ourselves around the lake and yeah, it's paid off, thank God. So all I'm doing, um, I kind of brought my English style of fishing over. I don't really want to adapt too much. I, I want to stick to what I know. Uh, me and Lou ended up flipping the coin for which side, so I got a bit lucky there. Basically, it's quite a deep lake from what we can gather, and one side's shallow and one side's deep. I'm in the shallow side and Lou is in the, in the I'm in the deeper side, sorry, and Lou is in the uh, shallow side. Now, it's quite weedy out there. This, you've got a bit of Canadian out there, which is quite thick, and then you've got like the kind of slimy weed um, covering the bottom. And then you've also got some clay out there and some silt. I really did want to find a hard spot, a little bit of gravel, because I'm adamant that that is what these big carp are looking for, uh, a bit of bait on a, on a spot like that, I think will result in bites. And that's what's happened. I found a spot five wraps out, really close in, just on the edge of some bushes. Um, it's the only real feature I've got in my swim. So I wanted to fish close in, just on the top of the shelf, because I do think that they'll be patrolling round in, at, at night sort of thing. So yeah, five wraps out, left hand rod, just over to my left in a little corner. It's been pretty quiet in that corner as well, which was another, another bonus to that spot. Um, couldn't be more simpler, literally. Little dumbbell wafter with a little, little split shot just to keep it down. And a, a handful of boilies and literally two, two little spoonfuls of particles and that's all it took. Probably in the water about two hours I reckon, not, not much longer than that and the take, take came. So. I'm going to get that rod back out now because I'm, I'm really, really excited for the night ahead. We've still got four nights on, on us sort of thing this week. We have, we have to leave early Sunday morning, so yeah, I'm going to get it out now. And I think everyone's in with a really good chance tonight. Tris had a couple of liners over where he's fishing. So have Alex and Gemma. They've, they've found fish in front of them this morning. Well, this afternoon when we got here, sorry and she's had one as well so it looks good for all of us Lou's, Lou's got fish in front of him it really does really does look good so I can't wait to get this rod back out me and Lou are gonna have some dinner um, soak it all in probably look at some pictures and build the excitement for the session ahead So, it's the first morning of the new adventure on a different lake. After the absolute scenes we had last night, um, yesterday evening, we, uh, we had a few beers and some nice food that Lou cooked, and then we got our heads down. Um, throughout the night, it was quite quiet over here, and first light, I had a couple of liners, um, I fell back to sleep, and I was awoken to an absolute melter on my right hand rod. Four wraps out, only close in. Again, over a handful of boilie and a handful of tigers. A little bit of particle in there as well, so. Yeah, not gonna weigh it. It's probably around 22, 23 pounds. Nice short and fat one. 
fought like absolute demon as well. Tearing line off. What a start to the trip on, on this new lake. Lou's got a few, uh, few camera duties to do as well. He's got to go around the whole lake because it's been a quite a productive morning to be fair. And there's a couple of chunks as well. So yeah, I'm gonna get this little one back. I think I'm gonna make some breakfast because I'm starving. Happy days. <laughs> What happened in the early hours this morning, Gem? Well, my right hand rod went off and didn't fight much. I thought it was only a small one until I got up near the surface and Alex swooped it. I was just about to get into bed, so, and Alex was taking some pictures and all of a sudden it just screamed off and I've managed to bag myself a 50 pounder, which is my new PV. <laughs> so excited. Oh my God, good things happen to people that wait, don't they? Jesus, it's huge. <laughs> can't believe it, I really can't. Never ever did I expect to catch bigger than my PB than last time. Madness. <sighs> He's so heavy, so <laughs> I can't even lift him. <laughs> oh my God, best trip ever. <laughs> No, there's no damage whatsoever. I can't see where mine was. But when they got the top curtain, you know they've not been caught that often. Here's my first round of the trip. It's been a, uh, it's been a hard start. Nothing went to plan. And to turn up at a lake that a couple of Dutch guys put us on places like dreamland the fish in here are stunning and when the guard told me there's a 30 kilo fish in here none of us was moving that's our target still got three nights ahead of us 250s have been out already oh, plenty more to come I think this place is amazing one last look 36 pounds. Oh, look at that. Wee. Oh, I'm just going to put it back. Stressed enough as it is. Come on, girl. about that for a French public lake common. 
sure everyone's said a pretty similar thing this morning. Now, the last few days have been stressful to say the least, but it has all become worthwhile for nearly all of us now. And it's only been our first night. Was it nine takes last night between us from a lake that doesn't look like it could throw out such fish, but it has, and uh, not many other words than buzzing, is there? <laughs> happy, happiest of days. Well, good afternoon. It's lunchtime of our first full day on this lake now. And as you would have probably already seen by now, the, uh, the action has been very, very thick and fast this morning. After the, the first couple of fish yesterday afternoon on, on arrival, uh, everyone's managed to catch a fish this morning. I'm still sitting here uh, with, with my fingers crossed for a bite. I am in a shallower area of the lake with a big plateau that's running out straight in front of my swim, near enough to the other side of the lake. So I'm on the shallower side of the lake um, and I do think I'm probably going to have to find some deeper spots, but I'm going to sit tight and hope for uh, something this afternoon. Good morning. Good morning, sir. So, another productive morning for me. It's now the second morning on the public lake. It was pretty quiet last night for everyone. I had a couple of liners around midnight and uh, kind of couldn't get back to sleep, mainly because there was fish boshing everywhere in front of me and I was certain it was a matter of time before one of the rods would slip away. I did manage to fall back to sleep and just before first light, um, my left hand rod tore off and that was a proper big mirror which is waiting in the, in the retainer now. And just as we were sorting that one out, my middle rod ripped off, which was this angry little common. Probably the smallest one of the trip, but more than welcome. I'm just going to get this one back and weigh the, uh, the hippo that's waiting in the sling, because she's a proper one. Seven, 
47 and a half. Oh. Come on, mate. I knew it was close. Well, this was the first bite of the uh, early morning spell this morning. Just on first light, the margin rod, which done the 50, has done this one. 47 and a half pound, crazy fight, proper powerhouse of a carp, and I'm blown away, I can't believe it. What a, what a session and what a place. Public lake fishing, you don't get better. Unbelievable place. Right, so what another fantastic way to start the day here in France. As you've just seen, Kieran's had another absolutely whacking mirror. Um, 47 pound an ounces, an absolutely colossal fish. Um, we never expected anything like this, um, to be honest with you. Uh, it's, I know we keep banging on, but it really was hard work trying to find the right water to drop on. And just dropping onto a place like this and catching two fish over 50, and an upper 40 pounder in the first two days is absolutely unreal so we're all blown away um, the action has continued for most of us on the lake um, Kieran obviously had those two this morning um, Alex has had one as well and Tristan had a small mirror the uh, the action however hasn't come my way still um, this is our third day here now and I've been sitting confident most nights but as I might have previously mentioned, this swim that I'm in to the right of Kieran has a hell of a lot of shallow water. It's, it's basically a big plateau that runs from this side of the lake to the other. Um, and after a, a bit more investigation this morning, after waking up with motionless rods, putting the lead out and feeling for the drop all over the lake, uh, sorry, all over this swim, I really can't find anything deeper than what I guess is probably four or five feet, maybe six in places um, and quite a lot of weed. So obviously I wanted to give it one more night in here last night. Our receiver died last night as well, which is always uh, fun and games when you're listening out for bites in the night. But um, yeah, after the, the success from everyone this morning, I, I really need to be getting on the fish now. Um, we've got two more nights left, tonight and tomorrow. And uh, yeah, after all the action this morning, I've, I've taken a, a short walk around to the other side of the lake into a swim into the, the far corner and I've found the depths that I've been looking for. Um, there's a hell of a lot of weed in that swim, but I mean, all the bites that have come from the guys on, on this trip at, at this lake have been from between eight and 10 feet of water. So the fish are obviously sort of confident in feeding in those sort of depths. And uh, where I'm fishing can't, can't be any more than four, five, six feet. So um, yeah, it was worth a try, but with this change in weather, it's a lot cooler than it was on the first day. Um, the pressure has dropped slightly, so I, I think I definitely need to be in that, that deeper water. So as you can see, the gear's all sprawled out behind me in the swim. I'm going to uh, take a quick sort of rapid pack up and get myself round to that new swim. I've, uh, I have already taken a rod round there and had a, had a small lead around and found these deeper areas that I do quite fancy. And yeah, I'm going to get myself round there, get the gear set up going to get some spots primed for this evening because it seems like it's just evening during the night and early morning bites and uh, and yeah I'm probably going to nip out to the shops today it's my turn to go and get a few bits of food and some more water 
So once the spots are all primed and the rods are ready to go, I'm going to shoot down the shops and, uh, and yeah, get back to get the rods out. Taxi service today, where would you like to go, sir? <laughs> to a swim with some fish, please, big Al. City. How's he been? Is he rocky? It's a loud bar. Bye. Bye bye. Bye driver. So a little bit of an update from me. Um, I've been a bit of a recluse this session. I've been hiding around the back in a little bay away from everyone. So uh, I haven't had a camera with me or anything. But it's not all bad. Um, I have had two fish now. Um, as Louis mentioned earlier, I did I had one sort of early hours this morning, just, just before first light, and uh, just as I was kind of sorting the, the fish out, um, putting it into a retainer in the water, it was my fault, I've been a bit lazy. Uh, it was only small, it was only about, I don't know, 14, 15 pound. Really nice little mirror, but unfortunately that got out of the net. But, um, obviously if it was a bit of a bigger fish, I would have taken a bit more care <laughs> into uh, making sure that didn't happen. But yeah, it did. I did it quickly in the rain. So uh, yeah, things happen, it doesn't matter. Um, it's always good. There's another another bite from this swim. Um, a new spot as well. A new spot that I found yesterday evening going into dark. So yeah, really happy. As you saw earlier, I was sort of wading down the margin and hand placing my rigs uh, in amongst all the weed and little clear patches. And uh, that's exactly what I did with my, my rod that I mentioned a minute ago that I placed on the other side of the lake. Uh, I, sort of, I cast onto the bank, um, onto the grass verge. Have a rotted pub in the air on this side. I walk round, pick my rig up out the ground tightened up the line and walked along the margin and found a really, really nice little spot just underneath a coot's nest, um, which actually did me the fish last night. So really happy about that. Um, yeah, got two more nights now and hopefully there's a chance for me to bag another one. Lou's just moved swim and uh, with that I think another two anglers was turned up to fish on this lake which may make a bit of a difference you know it's a reasonably small lake to be honest um, it's about six acres as we said previously and uh, yeah I don't know what sort of good or bad another two anglers jumping on is going to do but uh, I'm sure tonight we'll find out. Well, it lasted longer than I thought I was going to, to be honest. <laughs> With the amount of pike angers we saw here on Wednesday, and to be honest, I didn't really fancy my chances because we saw such an outrageous amount of people lure fishing and uh, very few, if any, catch. I haven't seen a single person catch one. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> couldn't help myself. Had to be done. And I'm uh, happy now. <laughs> <laughs>
cooked. Is it cooked? The cork's cut all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. I wish it's alright, at least we can drink it now. I wish well that didn't go very well. I wish I got that on camera. Well, I saw Alan Blair do it once and it looked fing <laughs> easy. <laughs> so I've gone pop and it's gone crack. Let me just get a close up of your face, Trist. Morning. It's uh, Saturday morning now, last full day today, and I've only just been able to get the camera up because it's been absolutely pouring down all morning. So I've been stuck in the brolly. It's about nine o'clock now. Um, another productive early morning for me. I had two bites, the first one being a 23 pound mirror, and then in the rain this morning, the same rod which I put back out, went again, and that's a nice, probably scraper 20 common, which is just waiting in the net. So, looks like we've got a little bit of a break now in the rain. So I'm gonna get the fish out, we'll have a look at them, and uh, see what today brings. <laughs> right, so, this was the first one of the morning. Lovely 23 pound mirror on the middle rod, which is a spot I found yesterday and it's produced three fish already. So it's obviously working. It's just a little soft spot, just on the edge of the weed. And there was a bosh in there, probably around midnight they started boshing there last night, so I was pretty confident all the time. And sure enough, it peeled off. And what a lovely carp. This was the second bite of the morning. Absolutely mint little comment. Off the same rod which I had, the mirror, previously. Um, eight wraps out, literally a scattering of boiling, and that's all it all it took. Absolutely tore me over the lake again. They all fight so hard in this deep water. But absolutely mint fish. All of them have been the same. What a lovely place. How do you feel after 17 nights on the bank? A bit like this? <sighs> I wouldn't want to do this a lot. Oh, smell. Hairy. Probably not very clean. <laughs> oh, f***ing itchy now. It's horrible. Get me home. Get me home to my bath. My missus and microwave. Morning. It's a wet one. Um, as expected, last night was quiet for me. 
um, I'll be honest. And I very nearly did move last night just before dark, but it started pissing down in rain again. And um, quite frankly, I didn't really want to get everything wet. But I thought I'd stick it out here for one more night anyway. Um, long story short, it's been quite quiet around this area, angler-wise, for the last three days since we've been here. But um, yesterday afternoon, being a Friday, uh, two guys turned up. Well, actually, about four guys turned up. But two guys turned up on, on that would affect me. Uh, one to my right hand side fishing four rods across to the other side and one directly opposite me fishing three rods to my side so that's seven more rods that haven't been here for the last three days and to be quite honest with you i didn't ex you know i expect i expected very little to happen last night to say the least as you know i am in a little bay um, a little bay that is now very cut off um, when I first came in here, to be honest with you, I, it was only really going to be for a night to see what happened. Um, but I had a fish, so obviously I was going to give it another night. The second night I had another fish. So, yeah, it's gone all quite well up to this point. But now I've been so cut off, I've decided I'm going to move lake. Um, there is a lake directly behind me. Um, I've made a friend called Stefan, lovely old boy, fishing with his mum and dad. And he has had some cracking fish, to be fair. Um, yeah, I photographed the... Uh, 40 odd pound mirror for him yesterday, we'll start by scales and then a mid 30 the day before yesterday. So, uh, sorry, mid 20 the day before yesterday. So, yeah, there was a pack of fish in there, maybe not quite as big as this one, but um, at this moment in time, I don't really have much of a choice. <laughs> I'd rather not stay in this swim, and there's not really anywhere else I'd, I'd choose to move to on this lake. I'm at the zoo. Yes. It's time for a little change. Nothing's going on with my rods. I'm going to try a long shod in the weed, the light lead. Let's see if I can present the bait on top of the weed because they are showing on top of the weed. Don't know. Only Jesus can save me now. That's my plan, just fall into shit. I had a pretty solid plan. Uh, my man, Stefan, I was talking to before, a uh, mate opposite me on the other lake. He's had, he's had two fish over three nights. <coughs> he uh, chatting to him this morning, he's off in about three hours. So I was like, yeah, sweet, I'll, I'll jump in after you, 100%. Like, you know, pulled my best French out of my ass. And uh, yeah, started getting bits together and that to be fair, I'm pretty ready to go anyway. But um, and just like that, another French guy just pulled up, stood, stood there talking to Stefan. I see him talking, and I've just gone, Yeah, I'm going in there for the nuit. My, one night I'm going in there, and he's got, Ah, s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît. Uh, just, I've got eight nights, and I'm just like, Yeah, well, I'm going to go in here for one night, and you've got a whole week. And he's like, No, it's complicated, it's complicated, please. Not, no English there at all, me putting my best French out, you know. Basically, I flopped and I know I'm a pretty strong-willed person. If I don't want to do something, I don't do it. But, yeah, don't really want to piss off the locals, I suppose, do you? Especially not all one night left. But, uh, he was getting a bit irate and a bit frustrated with it. So I just thought it'd be best to give him a swim. It just pissed me off because I don't give in easy, but I have. Yeah, not too sure what I'm going to do now bit of a spanner in the world, just getting a bit excited about fishing over there. I see a couple of fish bosh, fish fizzing. I felt like I could have caught a couple. But now I have no plan. Again. Yeah, I don't really know what to say. So I'm gonna probably go for another wander around that lake. 
The reason I wanted to fish that swim is it's like, you can fish a drop off, you can see quite clearly on Google Maps that it goes really shallow, really deep. And uh, yeah, anyway, they're obviously there because I can see them boshing there, but that's my plan's f***ed up anyway, so I'm not be going there. Anyway, let's find another plan. Okay, so I finally settled in a swim. It took a little while, took a lot of wandering around, a lot of uh, thinking, <laughs> pacing, but I finally settled on a swim for my last night in France. So this is the lake which is directly behind where we were fishing. It's probably about three times the size and I have absolutely no idea what's in it. The other lake's got really busy now. Um, there's probably, I don't know how many there are, probably seven people on on now and for a six acre lake that's that's just too much for me so i felt completely cut off and secluded in the bay so i, I was, that's why I, that's, that's the main reason i pulled off so i came around i had a few little casts around before i actually got my gear in the swim and i found a little bit well a reasonable clear area as well as google maps good old google maps you can see that there is quite apparently um, a very much deeper part in the middle of the lake um, I actually found that in my first cast. Uh, anywhere everywhere else around, it's around about five to six foot, and then I've got a big hole in front of me, it's down to 11. So, uh, yeah, pretty happy with what I've found so far. And, yeah, I've put a little bit of bait out um, on, you know, in that general area of that, uh, that, that 11, 11 foot drop off. So, yeah, I feel quietly confident for a bite this evening, to be honest. Keeping it simple. Got my tiny little wafter rig, which uh, has done me proud this session with the tiger nuts. But yeah, I've, I've gone for a little pink wafter. Uh, I've been curing these little bad boys for for months. So yeah, potent little wafter over the same mix as I had before. Crushed tigers, crushed boily, whole boily, whole tigers, bit of corn, and some canned bloodworms, obviously. So yeah, quietly confident. You can see what I can do. So it's the final evening now of our four night French stay on this public lake. It's been a, it's been a week of ups and downs really. It's been pretty good for me, um, very good for me actually. A um, couple of proper big ones. And also Alex and Gemma, they had a really good week. Unfortunately for Lou, it's not been too productive for him, but he's got everything crossed for tonight. He's feeling really confident. He's moved swim and uh, he's definitely on the fish. So hoping that he can have something tonight. Trist's moved to the other lake to see if he can winkle one out of there. New water for him, so yeah, he's excited on there tonight. And he's also on the fish as well. We've just seen a couple in front of him show, so. Lou's in the background cooking some nice dinner for us. I've reeled in to uh, come and sit over with him, have a little bit of a social for a few hours. It's also good for resting my swim, which I've done the last three nights previously, and it seemed to have paid off, so just giving that little corner a little bit of a rest. I think they move in 
into the deeper water just as it starts to get dark. So yeah, they can go in there, have a little little bit of a munch on the on the bait that I put out about half an hour ago, and I can go and get my rigs on top of the spots. So hopefully tonight, one of us can get, manage to get one last fish because it's been an unbelievable session for everyone really. Such a lovely place, beautiful surroundings, and the unknown of what's swimming out there is just is keeping everyone going. So if one of us can manage to get lucky again tonight, then it will just be absolute cherry on top of the cake, to be honest with you. Last minute change of lake has paid off for me. And believe it or not, Gemma's got an even bigger one in the retainer from this morning. I'm not quite sure how big it is yet. I think the others know. We all know it's a PB. And yeah, incredible. I I, honestly, I've got no words. I'm totally speechless. Breaking my PB twice in one session. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't ask for a better way to end what's been a incredible testing, demanding, and all round amazing trip around Europe with good mates to an end. Thank you so much for watching Create Your Own Path. We have had an amazing time filming it, and hopefully you've enjoyed watching it. Very old fish.
some reason, I think we're going to be seeing this place again. <laughs> He's ready to go fishing. We've got the footage then, haven't we? You're ready. Do you know what time it is? Disco time. Disco time. <clears throat> Joking. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Shields in a dress. Not it. Yes, prefer. It's 12 o'clock in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. I've got a lovely shot here. You're straddling a bit of celery. <laughs> I think I might use a wafter. A wafter rig? Wafter. Right then. So we've just been dropped off to uh, the area of the lake that we will potentially push fish. Right then. Well, I haven't had a shower for yeah. nine days. Oh <laughs> what happened, dude? Oh. oh. If there's a swim, which is as far away from you as possible, even if there's no fish in it, I'm going in it. Okay. Which might mean you've got to cook your own dinner. No way. How do you wash it up? But I've cooked every bloody night this trip. Fuck off, Louie. <laughs> you haven't washed up. Oh, you have, actually. You washed up last night. I washed up last night. Yeah. And I fucked your margin spot. You did. You, did that I? That pissed did me I? off. That pissed me off. You want some? <laughs> <laughs> Go in, yeah? Just touch the Freestyle. You look so small. I am tiny. Do you tell you what? I'll stand on the ledge. Do you want <laughs> Absolutely fine. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. Just stalking in the edge. <laughs> Two minutes. The ground's a bit slippery. <laughs> oh, yes. Content. Oh, look at the mud on the camera. <laughs> what happened? Oh. oh. You saved it. Oh, look, look who we've got here. Danny Fairbrass. <laughs> Ella Blair. <laughs> Carl and Alex. <laughs> Alfie Russell. Krista Peel. Harry Charrier. Harry Charrier. Fish are, the, the fish are fishing here and uh, they're gathering here. Gathering here today. Two fish. All day. Yeah. Uh, no. To fish. Fish. Fist or fish? No. Fist. Fist to fish. Yeah. Uh, so we, if we catch fish, we fist him. Yeah. And hopefully not. No, okay. No. no. Fish or fish. So I said serious? The fish are gathering here for, for spawning. Ah! I've had enough. You'll never see this face again. Everyone has now caught a fish, except me. Lou's left his rods out. Um, he's still yet to catch a fish, so... Hopefully Louis catches. It's been another manic morning. Um, lots of bites again to all the guys on the lake and girls, except for me. I had a bleep, I got really excited, and uh, that was it. Well, good morning from the Broly. Another motionless night for my rods. Motion off one for oh, What a trip, what a trip it's been. What a trip, there's not much else to say. It's just mad. It's been mad. <laughs> my, I'm sweaty, I'm smelly, I'm hairy, but I could literally drive out this ferry and do it again tomorrow. Same. Definitely. And it's not, <coughs> I don't think it's gonna be long before we're back over there, is it mate? Weeks. Weeks. <laughs> Weeks. Let's get a nap on this ferry and get yeah, home. Mate, 100%. Roast dinner at home. Coffee. Yeah. It's a real big end. And I'm absolutely chuffed. <laughs> to finally get my uh, my revenge on the lake. <laughs> Are you rolling?
What a buzz, man. Look at the size of it.